Hello, everybody. It's Wednesday night. I'm glad you've joined us. We uh, are here for our regular Wednesday night Bible study. And um, I'm glad you have found us because we are on a, on a new platform. We tried this out last week. And this is called the Church Online Platform. It's a platform that's, that's designed specifically for churches. And so we're, it works really well. However, the, the only thing that it doesn't do is it doesn't let me know who's online unless you uh, enter the chat, say hello, say I'm watching, I'm here. Um, and to do that, you have to create a nickname. And by nickname, it's just your name. You don't really have to create a, a funny nickname. I guess you can if you want, but it, we'd like to know who it is. Uh, so just let us know um, that you're on. If you were here last week, if you if you were on last week, then um, you can, um, you know, the same nickname should be available to you. You can create an account if you want to create an account with Church Online. Uh, that would be fine. That would be good. But that's not necessary for you to be able to chat. You just need a, a nickname. So uh, the the URL for uh, for our Wednesday nights is going to be the same every single Wednesday night. It's at solidrocksa.online.church. So uh, if you if you save it, then you can just uh, click on it every Wednesday. We'll be here uh, until further notice. So um, I do have a mixer question for you. This summer, we were supposed to have the Summer Olympics, which I love to watch. I love all the summer events, uh, especially the running. And uh, so I was really disappointed that, uh, that they're not going to be held because of the pandemic. And hopefully next year, maybe a year later, they'll, they'll be able to, uh, to hold them. So it got me to thinking... Um, about uh, the different events in the Olympics, both the summer and the winter. So my mixer question for you is, is, if you could compete in the Olympic Games, either summer or winter, which event would you compete in? Now we're dreaming, right? So don't say, well, I can't compete. I'm just saying if you could compete, if you were uh, able, maybe younger, or, you know, just able to compete in some event, which event would you like to compete in? Uh, for me, obviously, it would be either the marathon or, or one of the distance events, uh, a running event. Uh, but there's so many different events, you know, swimming and Winter Olympics of skating, maybe curling. I mean, uh, gymnastics. There's so many events. So if you could compete in an event in the Olympics, what event would it be? So just let me know. That just tells us a little bit about you. It just tells us maybe what your favorite event is and what you what you enjoy watching. So let us know that in the comments. And uh, in the meantime, we're going to go ahead and get started with our Bible study. We're in the book of James, and we're taking our time going through this book. And so we're still in, in the, uh, the first uh, chapter. We're about to finish the first chapter in this book. And, and so today's lesson is very similar to a lesson we had earlier this summer. Uh, in, in fact, the, the uh, not the summer, but the spring, when we first had to start meeting online only, um, the, the first series of lessons that we went through, which we just, you know, our previous series, this is only our second series, our first series of lessons was uh, was on the Bible. And, uh, and and it was basically, you know, how to, how to be, how, how to learn from the Bible was the name of those lessons, how to learn from the Bible. And so... A lot of what I'm going to cover now is, is going to be uh, repetition, uh, but I think it's good. Uh, I mean, I, I don't, um, uh, you know, I, I, I understand that we can listen to a, a message, a sermon, a, a lesson, a teaching, and uh, be moved by it. But you know, even a few days later, we've forgotten what it was if we don't put it into practice. And so repetition is good. It's good for me. And it's good for all of us as well. So today we're going to be talk about talk, we're going to be talking about how to be blessed by the Bible. How to be blessed by the Bible. I think often about the very first Bible that I that I owned, or that I remember owning. Um, it was when I was in elementary school, upper elementary. I'm sure, probably fourth or fifth grade. This is back in the days when we could just walk to school. It, it wasn't dangerous. We'd we'd walk to school with friends and would walk back home with friends. And so between our school and where we lived, we, I would walk by a, 
a little a bookstore. It was called The Good Book. And in fact, it was a bilingual bookstore. So it had a sign that said The Good Book and El Buen Libro. And uh, the owner of the bookstore was a, a gentleman by the name of uh, Frank Field, if I remember correctly, Frank Field. And um, very nice. Uh, to me, he was an older gentleman. I don't really know how old he was. He just was like a, kind of an elderly man at the time, but a very, uh, just a very calm, soothing presence. And so uh, we used to go in there regularly. In fact, my, my brother Ociel, uh, it may have been his first job. He worked at the, at the bookstore and uh, when he was, uh, I think, in high school. Maybe even younger. He might have, you know, I mean, he might have been in early high school. I mean, he just he started working early. But at any rate, uh, I had decided I wanted to buy a Bible. I remember my mom gave me the money, uh, and you know, one one certain day, this was the day that I was going to buy my Bible, and so she gave me the money, and I had it in my pocket. Uh, I didn't have a wallet back then. I was just a kid. But I remember throughout the day, I. I put my hand in my pocket and I feel around and there's the money that she had given me for my, my first Bible. I was really excited all day. I just couldn't wait for after school because on the way home from school, I was going to stop by the good book and buy my first Bible. And so all day I'd just be reaching in my pocket and just feeling the money and, uh, and, and looking forward to after school. So after school came, I started walking home and I stopped by there and uh, I went in and a gentleman came up and asked me if he could help me. I'm a kid, remember? I'm like maybe maybe fifth grade. Uh, I wasn't in middle school yet, so uh, fourth or fifth. And um, and I told him I wanted to buy a Bible. And he asked me, "What kind of Bible do you want?" Well, I didn't know. I mean, I just to me there was just the Bible. You know, in fact, the only the only distinction I knew was uh, there was an English Bible, the one my dad preached from, and then or rather the Spanish Bible, the one he preached from, and then I knew they there were English Bibles, and so. Uh, I just, I, I told him I didn't know. So he, he took his time. He was so patient and he took out a, a King James Bible. He began to read from uh, Matthew chapter one. And he, uh, he read, uh, you know, this is a genealogy of Jesus. Abraham begat Isaac and uh, Isaac begat Jacob and Jacob begat uh, Judas and his brethren and so on. And he, he says, and do you know what this means? Well, not really. I, I didn't know what that word beget meant. Then he took out a good news Bible. And, and back then it was just a, a, a paper you know, cover. It wasn't a hardback, paperback. And so he opened the Matthew 1 and he said, look at the difference. Matthew 1 was like Abraham was a father of, Jake, of Isaac. Isaac was a father of Jacob. Jacob was a father. I said, oh, yeah, well, I understand that's a lot simpler. So he says, I think this would be a good Bible for you. So that was my first Bible. I had just enough money uh, to buy it. Uh, and uh, so uh, that was my first Bible. And I loved it because it was clear to understand. And if you ever had, didn't you ever have uh, or read the Good News Bible? It had these little drawings, little cartoon figures. I love that. The cartoon figures of Jesus in a boat out on the sea teaching or you know, whatever it might be. Uh, I'd be interested to see if any of you are familiar with with that Bible, so that was my first Bible, and uh, and after that, you know, I've, I've had so many Bibles, and I've had some uh, that have been gifted to me. My sister Velma, I think, uh, uh, well, I know she's the one who gave me my first study Bible, and uh, when I was uh, a teenager, and so. Uh, but you know what? I've discovered you can have a lot of Bibles, and in our country, there are Bibles everywhere. But it doesn't mean that you're going to be blessed by the Bible. Just you're not blessed by buying a Bible. You're not blessed by having a Bible at home. You're not blessed by having a Bible in the palm of your hand or in your purse, in your pocket. And I'm speaking, of course, uh, you know, how, how easy it is to and convenient to have the Bibles uh, on our uh, cell phones. Uh, in, in our country, we have Bibles all over the place. Uh, you, you, can, you can buy them at Walmart. You can buy them in, in you know, just many different places online. You can get one on uh, in the motel room. Hotel rooms are available everywhere. But in spite of that, millions of people, even people that are regular church attenders, miss the blessing of the Bible because the even though the Bible is a book of blessing, it, it promises comfort and strength and hope, wisdom. It, it promises uh, power and purpose. 
but you don't get those things just by owning a Bible. And so James, and, and we're in the book of James chapter 1, we're going to begin with, with verse uh, 17. James, being his practical self, gives us uh, some ways that we can be blessed by the Bible. So let's talk about some ways to be blessed by the Bible. The first thing he, he says is to be blessed by, uh, by God's Word. The first thing we can draw from this is that we must learn to treat the Bible as a gift. Treat God's Word as a gift. Treat it as a gift to you personally. Look at verse 17. And, and by the way, in, uh, on this platform, there's, uh, there's a tab for, there's a Bible tab. You can click on that and look up James 1.17 and just follow along with us. And you can read along. Uh, and if you'd rather read, uh, use your own copy of the Bible, that's fine too. But it'll be there for us. There's also a, a tab with a note so you can follow along. So uh, the first thing we said is uh, to treat God's Word as a gift. Verse 17 James 1.17 reads like this, Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights. So when he talks about the Father of the heavenly lights, he's talking about the, the sun and the moon and the stars who, that were created by God. So coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. Verse 18, He chose to give us birth through the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits of all He created. All right, so he's talking about the sun and the moon and the stars that God created. And he, he's saying, but unlike those stars, uh, unlike those lights, the, the sun and the moon and the stars that create shifting shadows, God is unchanging. God doesn't change like the shifting shadows of the heavenly lights. Now, and then, I don't know if you notice this, but he mentioned some aspects of God's gift of his word. He says every good gift and every perfect gift comes from God. And so here, here are uh, five things about God's Word and why we can treat it and we should treat it and recognize that it is a gift to us. First of all, God's Word is good. He says that it's good. It's a good gift, every good and perfect gift. And why is it good? It's good because it's beneficial. The, the teachings of the Bible are beneficial to us. They're for our benefit. God didn't give us this book for His benefit. He gave us the Bible for our benefit. So if we're not reading the Bible, if we're not studying, if, if we're not learning from it, if we're not applying the principles of God's Word in our lives, then we're missing out on the good things that God wants to give us. God's Word is good. And secondly, he says that it's what? Every good and perfect gift, he says. So God's Word is not only good, but God's Word is perfect, a perfect gift. And by perfect, it means that it's infallible. That means that it, it's uh, uh, incapable of steering you wrong, incapable of misleading you. We can count on, on God's Word. We can count on the Bible because it is, it is perfect. And uh, another, another part of, uh, of it being perfect is that it's perfect for us. Have you ever gotten a, a birthday gift or uh, a Christmas gift and you open it up and you say, oh, this is perfect. And maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. You know, if, if they, uh, a lot of us nowadays when we, especially at Christmas, when we exchange gifts, we give, we give our families our family members, an idea of what we want. So more than likely, it is perfect. Um, but uh, sometimes it might be possible that you've gotten a gift that wasn't perfect. Maybe it wasn't really what you were interested in. Maybe it wasn't really uh, something that fit you. Maybe it was something that the giver was really excited about, but you weren't so excited about it. It wasn't perfect. But we can say that God's word to us is a gift that's good and it's perfect. In other words, it's exactly what you need. It's, it's perfect in that it's infallible, it won't mislead you, and it's perfect because it's exactly what you need. So God's Word is, is good, God's Word is perfect. And then uh, thirdly, God's Word is true. God's Word is true. Verse 18, He chose to give us birth through the Word of truth. So this book will always tell us the truth. This book, God's Word, will always steer us in the right direction because it's truth. 
It, it teaches us a truth, and uh, Jesus said that the truth would set us free. So it is the truth. It's not, you know, people say, well, that's true for you, but it's not true for me. Well, there's no such thing as your truth and my truth. There's just the truth. Either it's true or it is not true. It, 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 there's just a truth. And this book is the truth. And then uh, number four is God's word is unchanging. It's unchanging. We read that uh, God is, is not, uh, uh, he, well, he's unchanging. He's not like the shifting shadows. And the, uh, the good and perfect gift that comes from above his word is unchanging. It's not like shifting shadows. So we, we know, you and I know, that we might get a good gift from somebody. It might be a great gift, but good gifts... Uh, great gifts will eventually wear out. Good things in life wear out. You might think you're in the perfect situation right now at your job or with your kids right now. This is a perfect situation, but those things change. Good gifts fade. They, they rust. They break down. Uh, and uh, you can't always depend on them. But God's Word is unchanging. You can always depend on Him, even when our culture changes, and our culture is changing so rapidly. And uh, sometimes I hear people say, oh, I wish I could go back to the way it was 30 years ago or 50 years ago. Things were a lot simpler. Well, the truth is that culture never goes back. It just, and culture always moves forward. That's just the reality. So we can dream about that all we want and say, oh, I wish that church services were they, the way they used to be. Again, you know, those things always move forward, and they change, and sometime the, the, sometimes the changes will unsettle us. But one thing is true is that God's Word is unchanging. So God's Word is good, it's perfect, it's true, it's unchanging. And, and also God's Word, if, God, I'm sorry, God's Word is life-giving. Verse 18 says that He chose to give us birth through the Word of Truth. So it's life-giving. Uh, God has given His Word to us to give us life. So we were created uh, to connect with Him. We were created to know Him. And, and the only way to know Him is through God's Word. So the first way to be, to be blessed by God's Word is to stop taking it for granted. Treat it as a gift of God to you. God prepared this gift, God has preserved this gift, and He's given it to you. Recognize that it's priceless. Uh, treat it as a gift, a good and perfect gift. The second thing that we can draw from uh, uh, James's teaching is, is uh, how to be blessed by God's Word is this. Humbly accept what God says. Humbly accept what God says. We may not understand everything, and we, and I mean, I certainly don't understand everything in the Bible. There are many things that I, I really have to uh, study and read and pray and learn from others. We may have a hard time with it, but I humbly accept what God says. There are parts in, in the Bible that to me seem a little crazy, um, seem a little bit like, you know, they don't really make sense. And, you know, part of that, part of that is that when we try to interpret uh, things that happen in the Bible, teachings that we find in the Scripture, we try to interpret them according to a you know 21st century filter, according to our contemporary filter. Then yeah, a lot of those things aren't going to make sense. So that's uh, that's a mistake to try to interpret everything based on our life now in 2020. Now, but uh, in 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 any case. Uh, there might just be some things that I don't understand how that's, how that's a case, how that's true. But I humbly accept. I humbly accept. Look at verse 21. Look at verse 21. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you, which can save you. You need your soul to be saved. There it is right there. You humbly accept the Word of God planted in your hearts. Now notice those phrases, humbly accept and planted. Now in the Bible, God often compares our accepting His Word to gardening. To gardening. I don't know anything about gardening, you know, but I understand the basics, you know, planting seeds. And, and it's like God is planting seeds in our hearts and in our minds. And then He says, okay, I want you to... Humbly accept what I have planted in your heart. Humbly accept it. 
And in, in the Greek, that, that word to accept is a word, uh, uh, it's a hospitality term. It's a word that, that denotes uh, hospitality. So it literally means to receive like you would receive a stranger to receive a stranger fully, to welcome him fully. So we are to welcome the word into our lives. We are to humbly accept God's word into our lives. Now, another thing I know about gardening is that you do, you do have to do some weeding along with the seeding. I remember one time, I was a teenager already, it was probably in, in junior high, that my mom... Uh, had uh, had me clean out her garden. My mom's always liked uh, plants and flowers. So she had a little, uh, not a garden, but a little flower bed. And uh, she told me, I want you to clean clean out all the weeds, pull all the weeds and clean out this flower bed. And so I did. And I thought I'd, I'd done a good job until uh, she came out to, to check my work because she always checked our work. Came out to check my work and, and uh, I had pulled a whole line of little... Uh, flowers little uh, or plants she had planted and she said though I planted those and I said oh well I wonder why those weeds were all so neatly in a row <laughs> you know so uh, you know I'm get, I don't remember I guess she replanted them but uh, so I wasn't great at that but I, but I do know that you have to to weed when you seed in order to accept God's word planted in our hearts we have to clean out some of the stuff that's in our lives. Get rid of the filth. That's what he says at the beginning of verse 21. Get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent. And so we've got to do you know, some deep cleaning. We've got to clean out space in, in our heart so God's word can be planted. And so get rid of the filth. Get rid of the... Uh, of the evil, you know, uh, I was reading that this word, uh, the, the word for filth in the Greek, James says, you know, get rid of all mor moral filth. That word literally means earwax. Now that's kind of gross, right? Earwax, because that, I mean, if, if you if you've ever had a problem or maybe had a child that had a problem with a lot of earwax and you stick a little, uh, you know, Q-tip in their ear and clean it out and it's like, oh, it's gross. Well, that's really, that's the point of this, that sin blocks us from hearing God. Sin plugs up our sound. It plugs up our sound. So I can't hear God when I've got moral filth in my life. I can't. When I have it in my mind. And, you know, so he says, get rid of moral filth, get rid of, of evil. And the way he, the way we do that is with confession. We confess our sins. Confession uh, cleanses us when, when we humbly confess our sins and we say, God, I, 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 I'm sorry for what I've done. And we list our sins and uh, we, we receive forgiveness for those things. And then we receive God's word. We say, I, I accept your word as, as my gift. I'm going to read it. I'm going to do what it says. Uh, that's, what, that's what we need to learn to do. So number one, we treat God's word as a gift. Number two, we humbly accept what God says. And then number three, study. Number three is study, then do whatever he says. Study, then do whatever he says. Look at, let's, uh, let's read this. Verse 22. Verse 22, we're going to read through verse 25. So read along with me. Uh, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard but doing it, and here it is, they will be blessed. They will be blessed in what they do. So we have to study then do what he says. And so let me go uh, through a few sub points here under this one. And, and some, some of these are the ones that we covered previously, so I won't spend too much time uh, on these. But it's, you know, it sure would be helpful if maybe you would, um, when you get a chance, go back. Uh, these are still on, um, on YouTube. And these lessons uh, are still on YouTube from our previous series. So you can go back and uh, and maybe listen to them again, but, but here they are in, in a nutshell. Um, first of all, we have to learn to listen 
to God's word. Um, he, when he says do not merely listen, he's not saying don't listen. He's saying listen, but, but do more than just listen. But it has to start with, with uh, listening to God's word. Uh, and that's what you're doing right now. I'm teaching. I'm teaching you from God's word. But you know, the reality is that we forget 90 to, I don't know, 95 percent of, of everything we hear within just a few days. Sometimes it, you may find it's hard to believe, but there are some times that I'll be going through my week and then I'll stop and I think, now, what did I preach about Sunday? And I've got to give it some thought. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, just that's the way our mind works. So if I go through that, I can imagine what. Uh, you know what, what you do because you don't take the, you don't have to go through the uh, you know the time and the process of, of writing out the sermon and studying and writing notes and stuff like I do and I still forget so uh, I certainly understand that and this is why we have to do more than just listen so if you're sitting there and you're listening and you know not taking any notes you're gonna forget this in in a couple of days maybe by tomorrow so listening is good but it's not the best way to learn the word of god certainly not by itself so then he says uh the, the next thing is we've got to study the word look at verse 25 uh, he says whoever looks intently into the perfect law that phrase whoever looks intently he says when you're looking intently not just Looking at it superficially, but when you look at something intently, you're doing what? You're studying it. If you're looking at, uh, I don't know, maybe something that you're trying to fix at home and you're looking at a part and you're trying to decide, okay, how, is, how am I going to put this together? You look at it intently. You're studying, you're studying the whole thing to see, okay, how is this going to work? So to look intently means to study. Keep looking intently. You know, it's more than just listening. It's studying the Bible. You look intently. That means you read. That means you search. That means you, you, know, you look up other passages to help you understand the first passage you're looking at. Yeah, and I mentioned this last time, but you know the difference between reading the Bible and studying the Bible? The, the main difference between reading the Bible and studying the Bible is a pen or a pencil. Something to, to write with. Because if, you, if you're not writing things down, you're just reading the Bible. If you're writing things down, okay, now you're into studying the Bible. Now you're looking intently. So if you read the Bible and you study and, and you write something down, even if you're writing down, okay, this, this is what I think God is saying to me. Or you or maybe you write a question, you know, why was this done that way in those times? Something you're going to look into later. Uh, you know, you're studying the Bible. So reading means I'm reading. Studying means I'm looking intently into it. And so I'm writing something down about what God has said to me. So study the Word. The third thing, we're, we're uh, talking about how we study, then do what God says. We said you listen to the Word, study the Word. Third thing is make it a habit. Make it a habit. Back in, in verse 25, back to verse 25. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it. So you don't just look intently one time, but you continue in it. That means you make it a habit. You make it a habit. It means you do it regularly. That means you do it daily. And, and so come up with a, a plan. Come up with a plan that, that you can uh, read the Bible daily and study it daily. Come up with a plan that you can continue, not just look intently once in a while, but continue in it. Uh, we talked about some of these ideas last time. Uh, you know, I, I, I like to, um, to read when I, the last thing I do when I go to bed is read the Bible. Now, I read it other times, uh, you know, throughout the day, but I want it to be the last thing that I do. And I learned this uh, just really from experience because I remember uh, a while back, it's been a number of years now, I went to bed and I keep my cell phone by my bed. And uh, so I was, right before I went to bed, I was scrolling through my cell phone and uh, I, I read a news article uh, about something that happened here in San Angelo and, and it was uh, somebody had broken into the uh, Christ the King Retreat Center. I mean, you know where that is? Somebody had broken in and had vandalized it. They vandalized, vandalized the, the property. They vandalized... I think there was a statue of the Virgin Mary that was, that was vandalized and so on. So I read, I read that story, and, and, uh, and that was the last thing I did. And then I put my phone, cell phone down, and I went to sleep. 
And I dreamed that night. I had this crazy dream. And the dream was that my wife and another lady from the church, who shall remain nameless, my wife and another lady from the church had gone to Christ the King Retreat Center, and they were accidentally, accidentally vandalizing it. And so my wife called me. She said, you need to come get us. I drove over there, and of course it's dark. I'm driving. I'm looking for them. And then, you know, how crazy dreams get. And so then the next thing I knew, uh, I'm with them, but I'm carrying this, this big, big old log. It was, it was a log. So I'm carrying this log, and, and we're running. Now the authorities are after us. And so we're running, and, and I turn around with this log, and I, I knock this statue down. And I, so I said, I don't know. So I turn around, and I've got this log, and the log hits in a, a window in a building and, you know, breaks the window. I'm like, oh, no, we're making things worse, you know. And then I woke up. I thought, oh, my word, what, what kind of dream was that? But, you know, that was what I went to bed thinking about. It was, it was a crazy dream, you know, but that's the last thing I read. And so all of a sudden I put myself in the dream. So I like to, I like to read, um, and usually not from my phone. I, you know, I, I like to do it from a Kindle that I have, uh, just something a little bit bigger. But uh, the last thing I do is read the Bible. So, you know, maybe you can at least start there. And don't go to bed having scrolled through Facebook for half an hour before you doze off. But... Uh, put God's word into your mind and, and maybe make it as well the first thing you read in the morning before you, uh, before you even do anything else. Uh, have a set time. Have a set time to have a regular Bible study. I'm just talking about just kind of reading, some extra reading, but have a set time and, and have a set place where you uh, will read and study the Bible. So make it a habit. Make it a habit. And, and to make it a habit... I think you have to purposely set a time and a place where you're going to read and study the Bible. So uh, the next one is memorize the Word of God. We talked about this in our last series, but we're still in verse 25. Whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it. Not forgetting what they have heard. He's talking about you memorize the scripture. You memorize verses that are important to you. You don't have to memorize the whole Bible, but uh, you'll be blessed by God's word if you memorize it. We talked about this. I gave you a, an idea of maybe using some uh, some little uh, index cards and writing down in your own handwriting, writing on the verse you, you want to learn that week and carry that card with you. And during downtimes, your day, take it out and, and look at it. Uh, so, uh, Memorize it. Reflect on it. We talked about reflection last time too, just meditating. This is a good way not just to memorize it. Certainly it helps memorize, but also to get it into our hearts, into our spirits. So memorize the word. And then finally, do what it says. Do what it says. Uh, verse 22, he says it clearly. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. And then in verse 25, he says, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it. So twice he tells us of the importance to, to do what God tells us to do in his word. And remember that James says, we read this here uh, earlier today, that uh, a lot of people are like when they, when they read the Bible, they're like uh, when they look into a mirror and, and then they walk away, they forget what they just saw. Most of us, if we look at ourselves in the mirror, we, we see that something's wrong and we fix it. Our hair's not combed. Uh, you know, we need to wash your face, whatever, if it's early in the morning or throughout the day. If we see in the mirror that we need to fix something, we don't just say, oh, that looks terrible, and then walk away and not do anything about it. But he says, people who read the Bible but don't do it are like people who look in the mirror. Then they walk away, they forget what they just saw, and they don't do anything about it. So uh, God's Word is a mirror to us that helps us to see ourselves accurately, not the way that the, the world sees us, but the way that God sees us. And so when God speaks to you through his word, then determine you're going to do what he says. Uh, the blessing comes not from reading it alone, not from listening to it alone. The blessing comes in doing it. That we, that's what he says in the end of, of verse 25. They will be blessed. This is the last phrase of verse 25. They will be blessed in what they do. So build your life on this. Build your life on this gift that God has given you. Build your life on that. And, and you'll find out as you do that, 
that your life will be rich, will be full, and will be blessed. So as we conclude tonight, we're going to finish with a prayer. And I just want to ask you the question, what are you building your life on? I want to encourage you to build your life on God's Word. Build your life on God's Word so you can be blessed by it. Uh, Don't build your life on pop culture. Some people build their lives on pop culture. They're interested in what's going on in pop culture with their favorite artists, their their favorite uh, actors and actresses, their their favorite um, athletes, and their favorite music, their favorite movies. They're building their life on on pop culture. Some people build their lives on, on, on politics. And, uh, you know, I, I keep up with politics and I'm a little bit of a, of a, certainly a news junkie, you know, but we can't build our lives on that. If we want to be blessed by God's word, we've got to build our lives on God's eternal truth, God's unchanging truth. God is unchanging. He doesn't change like shifting shadows. So, Build your life on God's Word. Get into it, read it, study it, memorize, meditate, do it. Build your life on God's Word. So let's pray together and then I'll have an announcement for you after we finish our our prayer. Father, we thank you today once again for the challenge of your Word. I thank you that this writing, this letter of James is so clear to us so that we really have no excuse It is tempting and it is easier to build our lives on other things, but those are things that will pass away. But your word will not pass away. So teach us, Father. It takes takes discipline. It takes discipline. It takes effort. It takes planning things out and not just winging it. Not Not just reading the Bible whenever we get the urge or whenever... Uh, We're asked to do it in a church service and a Bible study, but it takes effort and planning uh, to have a uh, a plan, uh, to have a structure that would help us to build our lives in your word. So thank you, Lord. Help us to be doers of it, to lay the foundation of our life by reading, studying, memorizing, meditating, listening, but that all that would lead to us doing your word, practicing your word. But we ask for your help in that. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me tonight for our Bible study. So uh, this, this coming Sunday, we're going to continue to be online, but it's going to be a live service that's going to be coming to you from Cornerstone Christian School. Uh, it's going to be just me and the praise team there and, uh, and some other volunteers will be helping us uh, get ready and do some other things that, are, that need to be done. But this will give us a chance to work out the logistics uh, because things will be a little bit different when, when we all show up the following Sunday. So this Sunday, June the 14th, it'll just be me and the praise team there. You'll be able to catch us online. It's going to be a live service. And it's going to start at 11 o'clock. So for this Sunday, we'll still have the children's video at 1030 and then we'll have our live service at 11 o'clock. So if you're not on the praise team, if you're not scheduled to be there, uh, then catch us online at 11 o'clock. Then the following Sunday, which is the 21st, we're going to invite all of you that are ready to come in. We'll give you some more information about that next week. But that Sunday, we will start at 1030, which is our regular starting time before the whole pandemic. So one more Sunday of 11 o'clock, one more Sunday of Children 1030 main service at 11 o'clock. And then uh, the following Sunday, we're going to go back to 1030. So um, thank you for for, uh, participating tonight, for engaging. I hope that you were blessed. I will uh, look for you online this coming Sunday at 11 o'clock. God bless you and just have a great Wednesday night.